We'll take some time at this point in our service to celebrate the Lord's death. What we just sang about, to give thanks to God for sending his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to pay for sins. We're going to open our Bibles this morning, and if you don't have a Bible, uh, some men are going to come down the aisles and give you one. Just slip your hand up and let them know that you need one. And if you don't own a Bible, this is your Bible to keep as a gift. We'd love for you to be able to see God's word for yourself. I think we have some lights so that you can read your Bibles, yes. I want to turn your attention this morning as we prepare for the Lord's table to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. What we just sang about, that for all who are in Christ, God's wrath has been completely satisfied. The implication of that is for all those who are outside of Christ, that wrath abides. The wrath of God has not been satisfied for those who are not in Christ. And the death of Jesus Christ, a a brutal, ignominious death on a cross, an implement of Roman torture and execution, the death of Jesus Christ in the place of those who place their faith in him is not a statement of the value of those paid for as much as it is a statement about the awful condition they were in and the infinite price that was required for their redemption. And we come face to face with the love of God at the cross of Christ. Not that God would do whatever it takes to get something so valuable as me, but that God would do what he did with his son to save the likes of me. And the staggering reality, the result of that is what we're looking at this morning in 1 John 3, 1. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we would be called children of God. And so we are. Declaration of amazing truth, truth too good to be true, and yet it is true. From the words of Scripture, from the voice of God Himself, that by Jesus' death on the cross, those who are in Christ are declared children of God, sons, daughters of God. This is adoption through propitiation. That is, we were brought into God's family by the sacrificial death of Jesus in our place to satisfy his wrath and to bring us into personal relationship to him. And the great high privilege of sonship, adoption into God's family is something we will never deserve. And we will only ever sing and praise the love of God for these things. Friends, do you know the love of God? Have you experienced the love of God for the likes of you? Have you been brought into his family by adoption? Through the only way that that's possible, the the crushing of the son at the hand of the father, the, the death of Christ to pay for your sins, to bring forgiveness and entrance into God's family. And as children of God, we are heirs, inheritors of all of God's treasure and riches all of who he is, which he's laid up in store for those who love him. We have much now, and we have much to look forward to because we are in him. Believer, this next few moments is an opportunity for you to celebrate these realities, to rejoice in them, to revel in your forgiveness, to enjoy what it means to be adopted. And this is an opportunity for us to Thank God for what he's done through Jesus Christ. You don't have to be a member of Grace Bible Church to take the Lord's table. Uh, In a few moments, the bread and the juice will come around, and there's going to be a few moments of silence. That's an opportunity for you, believer, to examine your heart, to confess any known sin, uh, to make plans for repentance where appropriate, and to rejoice in the forgiveness purchased for you at the cross. And if you're not a Christian here this morning, if you've not yet been adopted into God's family, this is an opportunity for you to contemplate the state of your soul, 
to contemplate your eternal destiny, to contemplate your relationship to God? Are you abiding under his wrath presently, uh, which will one day be unleashed? Or are you embraced in his love? And friend, this is an opportunity for you to find life and forgiveness and love and peace and reconciliation, a clean slate, justification, adoption, and eternal life all in one moment if you will but believe that Jesus Christ's death in your place pays for your sin. Entrust yourself to him today. And if you won't do that, I would just encourage you not to take the bread and the juice. This is a moment for believers to celebrate what Jesus has done. And so the men will come forward at this time, take a few moments to pray. When your heart is prepared, take the bread and the juice, and I will close us in prayer.